and welcome back to the Alphabet of Astronomy. Today is brought to you by the letter T, and T is for tuning fork. No, you didn't accidentally wander over into musical theory YouTube. Tuning fork diagram is actually a classification scheme for galaxies. So you may have heard of the astronomer Edwin Hubble. He's come up a few times on this channel. He was very interested in nebulae that actually later turned out to be galaxies other than our own. So back in 1926, Hubble published a classification scheme for galaxies. Now this is what was called a morphological classification scheme because it was based solely on the morphology or basically the way the galaxies appeared and not on any underlying physics that might be causing these sorts of features. So it was kind of a purely empirical classification to help classify all of these nebulae or galaxies that they were seeing. So Hubble proposed three classes of galaxies, ellipticals, spirals, and irregulars. And then there was also these lenticular galaxies, which kind of straddled the line between elliptical and spiral. And for the spirals, he proposed two subclasses. So there were normal spirals and there were barred spirals. Okay, so how does all that make a tuning fork? Like this. So Hubble not only proposed these categories, but he actually placed them into this sequence, basically starting with ellipticals, moving on to spirals, kind of passing through that lenticulars, and then these irregulars kind of off on the end. So this shape that Hubble put them in is what is called the tuning fork, and this is why we have a tuning fork diagram for galaxies. Now there is some debate over whether Hubble actually intended this to be viewed as some sort of temporal sequence, that is an evolutionary sequence of galaxies from elliptical to spiral to irregular, or whether he was just merely ordering them from least complex to kind of most complex without any regards to time or evolution. In any case, Hubble introduced the early type and late type terminology, which refers now to its place on the sequence and not necessarily any sort of time element, despite the late early connotations. This is very similar to basically stellar classifications, where we have the OBAFGKM spe um, spectral classifications for stars, and O stars are called early type and M stars are called late type. Um, again, that refers to their place in the sequence and not necessarily a time component. So all of these categories that Hubble proposed, he broke down a little bit further than the main category. So for ellipticals, he classified them based on their ellipticity. So this is basically, you can measure the um, diameters in both directions of how the galaxy appears on the sky and compare the two, and that gives you an ellipticity. So if you had perfectly even axes, that is a circle, then you would have an ellipticity of zero, and that would be an E0 elliptical. This goes all the way up to an ellipticity of 0.7, which is an E7 elliptical. There's nothing higher than E7 because they can, didn't observe any elliptic ellipticities higher than 0.7. Now you might immediately spot the problem with this classification part for ellipticals, and that is we're only looking at two dimensions. This is a sky projected shape. And depending on the angle at which you're viewing an ellipsoidal galaxy, it could have very different ellipticities. And so this is really um, not necessarily a useful classification of what the actual galaxy shape is, just what we see it to be. Now the spirals, whether normal or barred, were subdivided further based on basically their arms and their bulge. So basically A-type spirals have the most prominent bulges, they have the most tightly wound spiral arms, and they have the smoothest stellar distribution. On the other end of the spectrum we have C-type spirals, and these have the least prominent bulges, the kind of loosest wound arms, and they tend to be very clumpy in their um, arms and what they look like. In between there are B, and in between B and A there's AB, and in between B and C there's BC. <laughs> so there's kind of a range here of these uh, certain properties of sp spirals. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, would under this classification be an SBBC, if you were curious. <laughs> and then after the spirals come the irregulars, which as the name suggests are irregular. Now these were irregular ones if they had any hint of structure in them at all, and they were irregular twos if they were basically just a total mess. <laughs> So this was the basic scheme that Hubble proposed back in 1926. Now we still pretty much use this today, but since then there have been kind of refinements and expansions of this classification scheme. Most notably by the French astronomer Deva Coulours, and later by the American astronomer Alan Sandage. So for example, irregular one galaxies kind of got moved into being late type spiral galaxies, so introducing the new D or M classes for spiral galaxies. It also kind of added some gradations between a uh, normal spiral and a barred spiral. So now there's like SAB class, which is kind of in between the SA normal and SB barred. So there's not always a defining line there. Now lenticulars were just classified as S0 in Hubble's scheme, but now there are subclasses for lenticulars that are based upon the amount of dust absorption present in them. 
Also added luminosity classes to spirals. So this is a class from one to five that basically describes the arms. So class one has the most well-defined arms and class five has the least well-defined arms. Confusingly, although these are called luminosity classes, they actually really have nothing to do apparently with the absolute magnitude of these galaxies. <laughs> And you can add sort of different letters, especially in spirals, to indicate different sub-features. So adding an S might indicate that the spiral arms go all the way into the center. You can trace them in all the way into the center. A lowercase r, this might be an inner ring that's present in the spiral. And an uppercase r might be an outer ring that's present in the spiral. But again, these are all different types of morphological classification, basically looking at a galaxy and trying to put it into one of these groups. Um, without necessarily um, making these categories based on the physics of what is happening or why the galaxies look this way. And this is just because astronomers have to deal with a large amount of data about things that they don't necessarily have a full understanding of yet. So we can observe all of these galaxies, but we still might not have a full understanding of galactic evolution. It's a very complicated subject. And so categorizing like this kind of gives us a framework to talk about galaxies without being, being independent of what we think we know about the model of how galaxies form and can help kind of guide our theory and what we think should come out basically of theories. So if you don't create different types of galaxies from your theory, then you know it's not going to match up with observations. So although Hubble's framework that he came up with back in 1926 was a little bit too simplistic and it didn't quite cover all of the whole range of galaxies that we know and love, it was a very useful framework and it's been refined and adapted and is still in use today. And we still call it the tuning fork diagram, even though I'm not sure how many people even use tuning forks anymore. <laughs> So that's the galactic tuning fork. It starts with E0 and the elliptical galaxies from early to late type ellipticals, transitions through lenticular galaxies, kind of at the uh, saddle of the tuning fork, then it splits into normal and barred spiral galaxies, and these have subtypes that are associated with the uh, um, how prominent the bulge is, how tightly wound and de well defined the arms are, things like that, morphological features. And then finally we have the irregular galaxies here on the end. These are kind of little oddballs that we have trouble fitting into the rest of this framework. It's a useful framework for categorizing all of the many, many galaxies that we observe and it is still in use today. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you will come back next week for the letter U. Have a good one. Bye!